everyone. This is our second episode in our research talk about the scientific method. And today I have the pleasure to have uh, a recent PhD graduate, Askat Minbai, who will share with us his experience. And uh, welcome, Askat, uh, to our conversation. And, Thank you very much for inviting me. A pleasure. Uh, Scott, let me ask you first, who is Scott Minbai? What is your background? What makes you, uh, made you think about doing a PhD in Nazarbayev University? Well, first of all, it starts from the uh, school times. Uh, I was uh, uh, loving the biology subject and I was interested. I have participated in school Olympiads and competitions and also did some uh, projects related to plant and uh, my passion uh, grew till, you know, I wanted to be um, like uh, in medical science also, uh, I want to be a, a, a surgeon initially, uh, the medical surgeon, a uh, clinical surgeon. Then uh, uh, by the time I changed uh, and changed the medicine to the biomedical science, uh, start uh, starting from the UK. I did my bachelor's degree in UK, then came back to Kazakhstan and did my master's degree. And then I thought maybe I should, you know, uh, further my um, uh, knowledge and uh, applied for the PhD in Nazarbayev University. Is there any person that was your role model to do the PhD? Your family, your near a uh, group of friends or colleagues or former professor? Uh, well, uh, my previous, uh, the lead supervisor, Dr. Adarichev, Adar Vyacheslav Adarichev was my role model because I loved his approach to the science, how he did uh, the science and how he, uh, we, we many times discussed every experiment and did in detail. And uh, I was actually, uh, you know, the uh, interest in the uh, PhD maybe grew uh, with the conversation with him. I see. And in your thesis that you just defended successfully, by the way, congratulations again. Uh, Thank you. What was the problem you were trying to address? My problem was that the, um, uh, the uh, diseases like rheumatoid arthritis uh, are the not well-known diseases. We don't know the uh, uh, pathogenesis. We don't know the exact etiology of that disease. And it, uh, uh, those kind of disease needs uh, further studies, obviously. And uh, what was the gap that you filled? What was done before? And what was that gap that you felt and your supervisor felt, we need to fill this gap? Well, the, there is a mechanism in the pathogenesis of this disease within a joint uh, cavity. And uh, the, we don't still know how the, uh, you know, I will go to the scientific uh, words, uh, like the, we don't know the, how the uh, panos is formed within a joint. I mean, it, we know the, how it starts, I and mean, it starts from the lateral side of the synovial cavity, but we don't know what's the trigger to that uh, formation of panos. Uh, you know, the, based on the studies on the mice models, we came to know that the CTHRC1, the, uh, the protein that we looked in our pro, uh, study, is the uh, could be the main precursor of the formation of that panos okay. within the joint. I, yes. I hear I heard you mention the could be, so it's kind of a hypothesis that you established, right? I, I want uh, yes, we we started with this hypothesis, and I think we established it somehow. But before we go to the results, which is very important, of course, I, I want you to tell us uh, what was the methodology you follow to test that hypothesis to prove that this was true or false. Okay, uh, so, you know, the, uh, every study in the biology starts uh, from the um, um, mice models uh, and they based on the results that we obtained from the mice models, 
uh, uh, we saw uh, we did the immunohistochemistry of the joint uh, tissue and saw that uh, the uh, significantly high concentration of this protein within a joint. Then we uh, wanted to test this hypothesis, our hypothesis on the human uh, samples. Uh, that's why we collected every clinical parameter of the uh, human patients, like the, um, uh, we collected peripheral blood, uh, uh, we collected synovial fluid, we collected uh, a, a, the, you know, uh, every uh, clinical parameters like the complete blood count, I biochemical see. parameters and all those. I see, uh, Scott, during your, your explanation, you mentioned uh, the word we, uh, as, a, as I know, and we know the PhD is your work, but you have to work with a team where supervisors and peers are important. But also, you had also, as I know, a good uh, stay in another lab outside Kazakhstan. Could you please give us a, a brief uh, overview of how, what was that experience you had abroad for the experimental part of your thesis. Okay. Uh, I was, uh, I participate in the, uh, uh, if I understand correctly, uh, you mean the GSK, GlaxoSmithKline in UK? Yeah, right? well, I, I meant part of that, yes, because most of our PhD students, as you know, they have uh, international experience. They go abroad for weeks or maybe months sometimes yes. to do part of uh, their work. I was lucky uh, because uh, uh, first of all, I, um, I was granted with that uh, stipend to do my par part of my PhD uh, at the site of GlaxoSmithKline, one of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world right. and based in the uh, UK, Stevenage. This could not be possible without the NU sport. Nazarbayev universities, uh, 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 you know, particularly the uh, school of, uh, at that time, school of engineering. Um, and there was a committee and they agreed to, uh, to give the uh, uh, money support or financial support to do this in, within the six months. And uh, Askat, uh, now going back to the results after you, you got your experiments completed, uh, what can you say is your major contribution of your work? Well, uh, uh, my major contribution is uh, this protein that we found as a marker of the rheumatoid arthritis disease activity can serve and can enhance the, first of all, the diagnosis of that disease. I mean, diagnosis uh, during the disease, uh, prognosis and controlling the disease. Because as we know that not every uh, treatment strategy is effective. And especially uh, with the rheumatoid arthritis patients, it's very hard. And, uh, and it's important to control this uh, progression or regression of this disease. And this marker is the marker of the, uh, to control, to monitor the disease activity. And in your case, could you please summarize what is the result in publication, uh, publications from your work? Okay. I have uh, based, uh, I mean, um, on this topic, I have two publications. Uh, one was, uh, I wasn't in the, uh, uh, I, I was within the authors, but I wasn't the first author. That was related to the mice model uh, experiment. And the second publication where I was the first author, we uh, studied the human samples. Ascat, I, I want now to remark the quality of these journals where you publish. What, uh, what is a typical journal where a PhD student should aim to? Well, uh, the, obviously, uh, um, uh, the Q1 journals, Q2 journals are very good. Okay, just for so, those who don't, don't, don't know about it, uh, Q1, Q2 are the quartile in the Scopus or Web of Science uh, um, index uh, uh, that uh, people try to publish are very, very uh, well um, uh, known uh, indexes. And um, Ascat, now regarding the future, how, how do you envision the future work? If you have to continue the work, what would you do next to enhance the work you did? 
uh, uh, in my, in my uh, my future plan is to do the postdoc and obviously to continue this work because this work needs further analysis in terms of the function of this protein within the pathogenesis of this disease. And now, based on your experience, and, uh, and, and what would you recommend to young researchers that are, let's say, doing their master's or even their bachelor, or even doing the high school? What do you think are the typical uh, characteristics of a person that should be embracing a PhD in the future? If the new generation wants to leave something behind himself, I think he should do the science. He should do the PhD because the PhD is an opportunity to to leave to you know to uh, to leave something behind himself. That's a big opportunity, I think. Great, great words to to conclude our conversation, Ascat. I want to thank, thank you. you again for having this conversation and for being part of our PhD program and being thank you a very good much. example for other students to follow. Thank you, Ascat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.